You know, I have a cameo this episode when Batsy's dreaming about me. That's true love. Oh, I wish Batman would dream about me. Uh, uh, I, I, I mean, have nightmares about me. Oh, yeah, that's it. Ah, oh, the dreamscape. Raw, untapped subconscious. You know, I've done quite the extensive study on the meanings of dreams, if you'd care to hear about- Absolutely no, not! Welcome back to another episode of Batman the Animated Recap. Last time, we covered POV, featuring the introduction of Officer Montoya. This time, we're recapping the third episode in a row to lack one of Batman's main villains, but it does show us more of Batman's investigative methods. Season 1, Episode 8 of Batman the Animated Series, The Forgotten. We open on the slums of Gotham. The camera pans across this run-down part of the city when... Wait. Hang on. Hang on a second. The bottom of that sign has a triple X on it. Did the background artist draw a sex shop into a kid's cartoon? Outrageous! They didn't happen to draw on the address, did they? Across the street is a homeless shelter, and we see Bruce donating both food and his time to it. The owner of the mission says that things haven't been going well and that he thinks people have been going missing. Bruce asks if he's contacted the police about it, but the owner says that the police are busy and, frankly, that homeless people going missing isn't really a priority. Bruce then gets a look that says, I'm Batman. No, I was gonna say... Wh Wait, Batman? What are you doing here? I was invited. By who? Oh, hey, Bats. What a surprise. You know, I was just thinking the other day that you should gas him. What? Suck it down. Fools. I've built up an immunity to your various gas attacks over the years. You'll find it doesn't work on me. <laughs> <coughs> oh, you gotta warn me before you use that stuff. Oh. Anyway, back at the Batcave, Bruce goes into his hobo wardrobe to find just the right outfit. He puts on a little stage number seven makeup and sprays his hair white before heading out on the town. Ah, nothing quite like a night out at the club. No ladies, just you and your boys dancing it out after a long week. Um, he's not clubbing. He's going to investigate the disappearances. Eh, tomato, tomato. What? N never mind. Never mind. Bruce hits up multiple CD locations before being set upon by some thugs. He easily takes out two of them without even taking his hands out of his pockets and pretty much letting them defeat themselves, but then he gets distracted. <laughs> Jesus, Bruce. Not every cat is a calling card from Selena. Get your head in the game. Also, do the writers just forget that they established Robin in the series already? Like, why the hell does Batman never have backup when he's using himself as bait? Well, no one likes a whiner. <laughs> you said it. That describes Robin perfectly. Who's Robin? I was talking about him. Hey, I don't whine, okay? I complain in a pathetic manner. There's a difference. Anyway, Bruce wakes up in a strange place and is quickly greeted by a couple of the locals, Dan and Salvo. They ask Bruce his name, but he can't remember it. Hmm, I see. The title of the episode is both referring to the homeless population of Gotham and the fact that Batman literally forgets who he is. Clever or a little too on the nose? I think we all know the answer. You must be some kind of jerk. We cut to outside to reveal Bruce is in... Utah? I... I'm very confused by the landscape of where this mining camp is supposed to be. They kidnapped him by truck, so they couldn't have traveled too far, but I'm having a hard time buying mountains in the desert a few hours outside of Gotham. It seems that Bruce has become a prisoner at a mining camp run by... Hoggish Greedly? Question mark? Uh, he's billed as Boss Biggis, uh, he's unnecessarily cruel, he sucks chicken right off the bone, and his voice sounds as if sleep apnea were a person. I have to eat! They have to work. It's revealed that he has his slaves digging for gold ore in the mines. Uh, he threatens his slaves and makes an example out of one random, locking them in a metal box, all while some rockin' music is playing. No! Please! 
Back in Gotham, Alfred discovers Bruce is not in his bed and wonders what's keeping him. We cut back to the camp and see Bruce, Dan, and Salvo working in the mine. We learn that Salvo was unemployed and that Dan worked at the Gotham Navy Yard and volunteered at the rescue mission before getting jumped. Hearing the term rescue mission resonates with Bruce, but he hardly has time to think it over when there's a tunnel cave in. All the elaborate death traps I've set up over the years and old bats almost goes out from someone skimping on tunnel safety? That actually would have been the ultimate joke. Wouldn't you agree, old chum? <laughs> uh, uh, what happened? Back in Gotham, Alfred has a look into Jay Leno's garage to discover that one of the cars is missing. He activates the tracking device on it to see that the car is in the Bowery. Meanwhile, Bruce finds himself in a hall of mirrors. He sees one of his reflections laughing at him before it turns into the Joker, pulling him through the mirror glass and falling off a tall building. You see, you really do care. Why else would you dream about me with your memory gone? Is that what you think? The gruel they fed us at the camp was green, and I ate right before sleeping, which you know you're not supposed to do. No, there's more to it than that. Admit it, Bats. You fear me, and I haunt your nightmares. <laughs> what? No. I'm Batman. I don't fear anything. Did someone say fear? No, no, no. No gas. No more gas. Your gas privileges have been cut off. Sorry, just a reflex. Bruce's nightmare continues, and he finds himself outside the mission where a mass of homeless Gothamites swarm him for handouts, turning him into the crying Indian. Bruce wakes up, sweating profusely, and... I just have to wonder, how is that paint staying in his hair? I've used those hair paints before, and even the slightest bit of sweat, and it's running down the side of your face. Lucius Fox makes my hair paint special. It's also flame retardant and bullet resistant, though the memory loss thing when knocked unconscious is a pretty hefty side effect. The next day, Salvo makes fun of the boss behind his back, resulting in him getting thrown in the box. When the guards attempt to grab him, Dan and Bruce step in, fighting a bunch of the guards to those sweet, sweet tunes. Eventually, Bruce and Dan get overwhelmed, resulting in all three of them getting locked up in the hot boxes. Back in Gotham, Alfred has tracked down the missing car via its tracking device. He also sees the goons who are dumping the car and seizes the chance to plant the tracker on their truck. Why is he in a butler's uniform? Doesn't he own street clothing? No, he's a butler. He gets a butler's uniform. I am a Batman. I get all other clothing and costumes. After spending all day in the hot box, Dan begins to crack, which actually turns out to be a good thing because this happens. My family! My family! My family! My family! Realizing he's Batman suddenly gives him the strength to kick the metal box open. <laughs> well, you writers just give him whatever powers you need to for the situation, huh? Hey, the writers have nothing to do with it. I don't skip leg day for a reason. Check out these gams! Bruce makes a run for it, being pursued by a bunch of guards and dogs, and... I mean, you know things are serious, because... There he is. Bruce manages to scale the cliffside, where he happens to rendezvous with Alfred, who's had a rough flight to Utah in the Batwing, having tracked the signal in the truck to the camp's location. But, being the eternal quipster, Alfred has my favorite moment of the episode. I, I, I claim this land for Spain. Bruce suits up, going after the boss as Batman and ruining his meal, which, considering this guy's relationship with food, was one approach to take. Um, yeah, mistakes were made. The baddies follow Batman into the mine, where he manages to dispatch a couple of them, prompting this response. Kill the lights! We'll find out if this bat in the dark. Ah, he thinks darkness is his ally. Yeah, I don't know what he was thinking. It's like he wanted to get caught. Batman takes out all the goons and chases after the boss in what must be the finale because... It is quite the catchy tune. The boss trips, igniting a bunch of explosives. Batman gets him and the boss out of the mine before it goes boom, but, uh... What about all the goons that were in the tunnels below? Yeah, no, they died. But technically the fat guy killed them. I just rendered them unconscious and left them in a place where they couldn't escape once that explosion went off. 
So my conscience is clear. Batman brings the boss to justice, and we transition back to Gotham outside the mission. Dan offers to let Salvo stay with him until he gets back on his feet. He then extends the offer to Bruce, causing this little awkward moment. Thanks, but I... are we ready, Master Bruce? Yeah, it's great being rich. As Bruce is driven out of the slums in his fancy car to his private estate, Salvo says, Hit me, Riley. Hit you? Why? Maybe I'll lose my memory and wake up a millionaire too. <laughs> oh, 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 it's funny because he'll probably die poor. <laughs> oh, 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 I can't stop. Oh, oh it hurts. <laughs> this is a fun outside of the box type of episode. I enjoyed getting to see Bruce do some detective work outside the cape and cowl, you know, even if it was a bit of a failure. I didn't much care for the temporary amnesia because, like, as soon as he remembered who he was, he just escaped. I think it would have been more interesting to see him as Batman in a tough situation without his gear thinking his way around problems. I did appreciate seeing Alfred doing a bit of sleuthing and tracking down Bruce after he went missing. It shows a bit more of the relationship between those two characters that we don't always get to explore on the show. What did you think? Oh, I think Batsy should get this one. After all, I invited him for a tea party and then forgot the tea. Let's find out what's in that bat brain, shall we? I like that this showed how much I care about the homeless. I even shed a dream tear. I have always been very selfless and generous. Sure, I could have done more for Dan and Salvo at the end, but they'll always have the memory of me driving out of their lives in style. Four out of five topographical inconsistencies. Join us next time when we'll be covering Be a Clown. What? Another me episode? Excellent. Till next time, kiddies! Oh, you were right, babe. Sometimes it just feels so good to dance it out. Oh, yeah. Do you want to bet bucks? God, don't make it weird, babe. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when more Batman the Animated Recap episodes go up. And we've got some other cool nostalgic shows on the channel, so stick around. You might find something else that you like.